has to do with the idea of surveillance of our pipeline systems, not just our pipeline systems, um, all associated uh, infrastructure. Before, before I start, I think I, I would like to play a, a one minute video that kind of introduces us to what we're about to talk about. I, I feel the size could be reduced, the size of the display. Is it not possible? It has to be closed because of the distance. It's called BASE, or Bay Area Security Enhancement. Super sensitive, high resolution cameras linked by a wireless network. The wireless technology comes from Sunnyvale's Proxim. For security reasons, we can't show you where the cameras are or how sharp the images are. But the network of 250 cameras will be able to spot suspicious activity and even make out license plates. So by having you know, very high speed uh, video cameras that transmit kind of standard networking protocols, you can link all those together now over very long distances with very high levels of security and with very, very high level reliability using wireless links, and that's exactly what they're doing. This point-to-point -point wireless system is far more secure than Wi-Fi, a mobile wireless network found in malls, airports, and coffee shops. High-performance wireless can be deployed faster and cheaper than stringing cables. Making these new systems hacker-proof is a top priority of South Bay Congressman Mike Honda, who's on the House Wireless Task Force. We have the capabilities of protecting our cyber system, our cyber space. Uh, but we have to put the money in it. And that's, that's the part, that's our next step. We have to infuse the money to make sure that the wireless system, the cyber system that we have in place to protect ourselves. Caltrans wireless surveillance is expected to become a national model. So Caltrans absolutely, I think, is a precursor to what I think you'll see in a lot of state local uh, government situations that eventually you know, nationwide. Installation of all 250 cameras in the Bay Area will be complete later in the year. A similar system is already in use at Fort Sam Houston in Texas. Proxa thinks this wireless... Topics application of emerging security technologies to the protection of national assets and infrastructure. In this case, is the pipeline. Now, as you heard in the brief video, the technology that we have is uh, just great speaking is that you can sit in, the, in your office now and you can monitor every foot of pipeline in the country, every oil well, platforms and so on. And not only that, uh, all of you could you have access to, have computer on your desktop, you could have, and have the ministry uh, clearance, you could have the same access, you could monitor. When there's an alarm, there's an intrusion, you could find at the same moment. Um, also, probably just as importantly, uh, everything that happens is being recorded continuously. And not only is it being recorded, the people uh, given the responsibility of protecting this infrastructure have the same access you do. Uh, Notify about the same time you do. I mean, you are. So that's a brief description of what you we're about to show today. Well, I've, um, which I think is necessary, since I'm never really sure of the audience um, that I'm going to be, be listening to the presentation. Sometimes too technical. See, if it's not technically enough, please forgive me to see me afterwards. <laughs> Very easy. Anyway. Um, I've spent some time on the deployment. And then, now here's training and maintenance. Now we're in Nigeria. And uh, we get turnkey equipment for common. They work very well at the beginning. And then somehow the ownership is not there anymore. And uh, the thing deteriorates and breaks down, nobody fixes it. And it's, it's done. It's not so in our case. And another thing that in particular is more distressing uh, in your line of work. I think, uh, is that some equipment might be obsolete and you can't find the parts for them. This that makes it difficult to correct the system. It's not here, it's not with us. Um, this is the objective of this project to deploy an integrated and proven 
system of proven and tested sensors, and other emerging technologies for the protection of national, national access facilities and infrastructure, particularly the petroleum pipelines. I break out sensors from other technologies because in your line of work, having the necessary and the proper type of sensors is, is critical to being able to perform your work. Um, quite a number of reasons. When we go there, we'll spend a little bit more time in it. And uh, in the course of uh, the discussion, we'll discuss some of the available sensors. It's not going to be ex ex exhausting. As usual, you can always, you can always discuss afterwards uh, in greater detail. Just a definition phase of some of the things that could be protected by this technology. And, uh, skill background. In the United States, there are 200,000 miles of pipeline, just oil, and uh, 95,000 miles of product pipeline. Since 9 11, there's been a lot of activity from the government's perspective, and of course, from private individuals to make sure that this critical infrastructure is protected from terrorists. Like Nigeria didn't have terrorists, you have uh, bandits and so on. But it's the same, basically the same thing. In, uh, in Nigeria, I think this January, there was uh, the, those reporting papers of a loss of 30 billion now uh, in products from bandits. That's a lot of money. <coughs> Before you begin to solve any problem, of course, you have to state what the problem is. So that's what I try to do here. And you are more knowledgeable about this thing than I ever am. I'm looking from the outside looking in. But uh, this, I think, probably gives it some flavor. But I'd like to address this one here, which happens, appears in the papers from time to time. It's people illegally tapping the tap lines for a product gasoline, petrol, kerosene, or whatever. And all of us like to work here. Yeah. So you have an idea of how much impact it's having on the economy. But what we've not thought about so much is here. I'm not sure how many Nigerian companies are that repair broken pipes. Most of the companies I know of are in Houston. So that means you have to spend foreign exchange to repair your pipes, and that's a lot of money. This time it happens. It's money that's inside of the country. Okay. Um, I'll skip the summaries question since some of you have had this before. Um, in regular CCTV, I don't know whether you have CCTV here. Um, you, you connect the camera, the wire, the wire moves up and you monitor it from a closed circuit television. Problem is, the recording capability is very limited, if any. So if somebody were to say, okay, I want to have pictures from a month ago, because there was an illegal activity here, I have to go through and search from one video tape to the other, even that one. Okay. The cameras that we report here are not that at all. These are IP cameras. So I thought I would put in some of the technology fundamentals about it. IP cameras like your cell phone have unique addresses, like your computer have uni unique addresses. So that means you can access any camera from anywhere in the world if you have access to the internet. And uh, some of the technology that we'll demonstrate here next month. Um, you will have a, excuse me, if there's a suspicion, there's an alarm on an oil well or tank farm facility or anywhere, and you are at home, the alarm will appear on that PDF, okay. and you can access, you click on it, and you see the video of what is going on at that particular time. Yes. And um, there isn't any internet access here. Uh, Part of the demonstration would be to access this 
website here. This website is a, is a camera in, uh, in Houston. So you'll actually see cars moving from your office, just to show what the technology can do. Yes. Uh, sensors. How do you install your sensors? Excuse me? Where do you install your sensors? Ah. Um, there are different kinds of sensors. There are vibrational sensors. Okay. okay. Um, the usually close enough to the pipes uh, for some. For others, you can, you, have, you can drill into the pipe and install the sensors in, inside the pipe. Inside the pipe. Okay. Um, the advantage of that is uh, any of these could be transmitted wirelessly into the network. Okay. And if you had a scatter system, and that's just from talking to energy, so that uh, only the gas pipelines okay, have scatter systems. But if you had a, a full scatter system, the information could be, we could be, we could be uh, interface with. And, uh, but at any rate, um, we, we now have the capability of transmitting sensor information wireless to the same video uh, capabilities that that the, the sensors uh, about their coverage supposing I have a pipeline now yes. I want to monitor every inch of that pipeline yes so the sensor if you the one you install in the pipe what coverage can they, what distance uh, you really can you cover uh, before you have another sensor Okay. It all depends. But let's see, let's assume that you have uh, this product and it's, it's a single phase, phase product. Okay. As long as there is not the type of the, the product or the content is flowing lamin or chocolate, it doesn't really make that much of a difference continuously. Then you could have a you know, couple of miles, several miles distance between them. And sometimes if, if you find that um, uh, several miles and the and the and it's essentially just having a somewhat a steady state situation. You, you could you could adjust uh, this method. Uh, and particularly staying away from wired wired line sensors. Okay, staying away from um, so it seems you'll use use uh, you determine what the frequency should be but it should be several, several miles. Okay. And the important thing is that once, I'm sorry, <laughs> once there is an once there is an alarm on each time, and, uh, and what you explain after the installation. Okay. But the, the important thing is that no problem is that the same transmission medium that sends you video, is having got the voice yet, will send you the uh, the sensor response and. Like if you uh, interface with the scatter system, you can also hook up your block box to up, okay, and be able to isolate certain segments of the pipe. Yes. What about the cameras? Right. The cameras. <laughs> you can install it here. If there's no, there's no place specific place where you can install the cameras. Um, you just. The properties of the cameras are that you can some of them have uh, like four miles focus a bit and one mile. So what I'm asking this question is yes. you know Nigeria situation is a peculiar situation. Yes. Uh, because uh, so many people have come to demonstrate their own uh, technology on this uh, security system. Yes. And we find out that uh, it's not easy in Nigeria to get all this uh, type of uh, security system work <laughs> because of the situation, because of the people. So uh, the only area we think uh, things can work better is uh, like if you have uh, your camera and the satellite, uh, satellite. Because uh, everywhere you put all these things, you see people vandalizing it. Let's, let's go through the and you'll see. I mean, we thought of that. I mean, it's not, not only Nigeria that you have a, a disruption problem. A problem. Um, I'm not sure what the, what the state of your, but uh, 
the, the foundation for all this is a good telecommunications. That is, that's the, you can't access an IP camera, you don't have access to the internet. That's right. So. Now, this is the existing infrastructure. Knowledge. To the best of my knowledge, there isn't a surveillance system. There isn't a media surveillance system in the pipeline no. at this point. Okay. The primary system is fiber optic cable. Okay. But between certain positions in Benin and some other place, there isn't any fiber. Okay. And there isn't fiber in the large part of the belt and offshore. So that all those areas are radio. And uh, so the radio covers those, those areas. Okay. Now, the backup system you have is a satellite system. There's an extensive deployment of satellites in this country. Okay. I think 50 locations. But the problem is that the bandwidth is 32 gig. It's good for data, and um, later on I will discuss why it is so very good, how it integrates into what we are presenting here. But you can't send, send video. The bandwidth is just too low for video. Okay. There is no redundancy system. And apart from gas lines, gas pipelines, and much, there isn't any scatter of the oil or product pipeline. But it has not been upgraded yet. As we make our way through this presentation, you'll see how you can integrate what you have with what you have proposed. And okay. I thought since a lot of people are not familiar with this, I should just give a brief summary of how the thing works. This an intruder goes into the forbidden area around the pipeline, so around your facility. It's picked up by sensors and triggers an alarm. Okay. NOC is a network operations center, and that could be anywhere. But since you're lying in good, as it could be in terms of towns. A lot of a lot of people have been thinking that it should be away from a strategic asset like BMC towns. It should be some isolated place. So that people don't go and interfere with it. And so, but that's a that's a private decision. It doesn't really matter where it is located. Okay. After it doesn't matter whether you don't have to locate just one. It could be in Portugal, here, worry, any number of places. Okay. Now, I mentioned here the incident is highlighted on the pipeline system map. What is that? Integral to all this is that your pipeline is mapped on the screen. There's an electronic map uh, on the screen. So when there is an alarm situation, a certain portion of that map starts to play. And there, could be audio. there are audio channels in the transmission, so you can arrange to have audio. But anyway, it starts to play, and you click that portion of the map. And it's and expanded. And it will tell you, well, this is happening in uh, you don't have any so some some place, yeah, you know, well, some place like that. Some place like that. Or or Jagger. Yeah. Jagger just outside Bur. Okay. Something like that Jagger. And it'll give you geographical coordinates. Now the reason for the geographical coordinates is really not for you guys, for the guys that are monitoring. That is for the guys who have to intercept to go out there in a like helicopter or or boat. Um, to make a quick um, trip down there, you might have met. That's how they, that's where they fly with. Okay, detection. The camera re records the image and differentiates, can differentiate between human and non-human intrusion. So it's a car is going through the place, or an animal, it sees it, it's not an alarm, it doesn't trigger an alarm. Okay, because you don't want too many false alarms. Okay. And, uh, because the image is displayed 
and all marriages and so on and so forth. But rule is dispatched within minutes. Apprehension. Because we have the capability, if you listen from the video, the video said it has the cameras are so accurate they could make a license place. They may say make a license place when they're passing by, they can make a license place from my way. Because they're so accurate, whenever there is an intrusion on our an incident, the person's face is captured. All the thing is captured. So there is no doubt who it was that was there and that was doing this. For the, for the country it's a lot better, for the government it's a lot better, because you don't have to go to the whole village and say, the pipeline was vandalized here, who was involved? And you drag a lot of people into jail. You can go out in the middle of the night and say, this is the person that did it, and nobody hears anything. The important thing though is that there will be, be a deterrence, because in the morning, the neighbors will talk, that this guy vandalized the pipeline last night, they caught him this morning, the next person is not going to try to do that anymore. So there's a deterrence factor. Police needs this too because of uh, is it, is the it, crime rate now. We are discussing with them. We are talking about yes. 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 so Before we go on further, because after this we'll do into some discussion on the technology that we have in Medicare. Uh, yes. okay. uh, supposing uh, the intruder goes there in the night. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. The camera. Um, Even in total darkness. Yeah. Yes. The camera can clip it over a mile away in total darkness. I see. Yes. Okay. And um, I should also add that the, the detection could take place even in the forest. So if the guy goes and snakes in there and there's a lot of light around, pictures can be taken. The face might not be very clear, but you're inside an alarm. And should he shield his face, any part of his face, eyes, eyes, nose, that's all. It doesn't have to be a complete face. It will be, be reproduce, reproduce, reproduce his face. face. It's called, uh, it's, it's a recent um, improvements in biometrics, that's uh, face recognition, face pattern recognition. Yes. Coming back, sorry, to the, that's that's back. the pipeline system yeah. carries fluid, yeah. and um, the fluid has characteristics. Yes. The, the variables are pressure, volume, specific gravity. Yes. So, can your system, what is the that's part of the system. Yeah. In the same kind of sensor, to be able to monitor those parameters so that if it sends it to the control, yeah. the control person will easily be able to know maybe the distance from a particular point because you can, you can do some calculations about the distance, the volume that is being lost, yeah. the pressure drop so many things. Like we have in SCADA. Yes. Can this do that? Yes. It's, let's put it this way. Um, the, the person who had the control doesn't have to calculate anything. Doesn't matter. No, don't have to calculate anything. Okay. Well, what's the point of having a bunch of sex? No, I said that we can calculate. Okay, now you can, but the person doesn't have to calculate. Just yes. have that information. That's what I'm asking. Yes. Oh, that because yeah. it's, it's not the calculation I'm talking. I'm asking whether, like, we can calculate if we have those parameters. Yeah. Can the system this tell you any of those parameters you call up? Does that automatically? 
Okay, okay, okay. 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 This is this is not uh, there's nothing really new here. I mean for those guys there's uh, for the, the five line operators and one one person can one company can you know has eighteen thousand miles right now. That's their duty, that's their job. So they spend a lot of time and install all this systems. So it's not something that's really Travis is gonna come and it's working in the lab, it's gonna come and test it actually. So, okay. Yes, please. Is there any difference between your sensor and the camera? Oh yes. Are they do they work smoothly? Are they integrated or do they work simultaneously? Or in the amounting or their installation, are they installed at one spot or one will be in the variance with the other as far as facing is concerned? Okay. The, the it depends on the sensor. The sensor that lets the camera know that somebody is where it's not supposed to know. It's an integral part of the camera system. Because you see, the camera has the capability, the PTZ ones that is, has the capability of turning around okay. 400 degrees okay. in two seconds. Once it, once it receives the signal back that somebody is there. So it turns around, zooms around immediately and locks into the incident. Okay. So that sensor is part of the, is an integral part of the camera system. The other sensors that we're talking about, um, which is intrusion or liquid sensors, or sensors that monitor the flow properties in the, in the pipes, uh, are not integral parts. But they are all they all sent up through the same pipeline, through the same wireless pipeline, and it could be integrated. It's a software issue. It could be integrated so that they work uh, together. Yes. If we have an intrusive sensor. Okay. Now, and you know our pipeline we're operating at a high pressure. Yes. And it's already That's in existed. That's already. It's already in situ. Okay. There existing. Okay. Now, with the intrusion, okay. I mean that means there will be perforation in order to insert it. Is it not true? Yeah. Unless no. you, it is a sensor that will still scan through the metal thickness and then get you information. That's a different kind of sensor. But there are, I mean, there are lots of sensors, but let's dwell with the one that you have to insert in the, uh, in the pipe itself. I, I used to work in an industry which um, you could, which it was necessary to have 10 to power minus 8. Once the camera is interfered with, banked on, well, whatever it is, and it's put out of service. If it is successfully putting it out of, out of service, you know immediately. Of course, whenever anybody touches anything there in the system, you know that something is going on. So if there's a patrol person, it goes there. But assume there's a success in putting out of service, you'll know that camera this is out of service. And then you'll go and you'll go and replace it. That's the first thing. Second thing is you don't want to go all the time replacing your cameras actually. So the deployment is very important. Um, there are, in Nigeria there are huts, uh, warehouses and so on, along the right of way. The camera, the camera can, it comes with custom enclosure, it can make it to look like any part of your roof. Okay. It can make it to look like anything. Of course it is bullets and explosion proof. Uh, it's bulletproof and explosion proof. Along with the custom configuration, um, it's, difficult to it's, it's, it's very difficult to detect that that's a camera. One thing. And more importantly, uh, while we still have cameras, let me also mention, because it came up, I think, uh, on Tuesday, yeah. whether you operate very well in, in Nigeria with our climate. Yeah. Uh, it is certified to work from minus 20 degrees to 70 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, okay. any further questions around the cameras? Because this is a very important aspect. Uh, yes, please. My manager asked something about the span of installation. 
Yes, plus three of yeah. frequency. <coughs> you talked about seven miles, which is approximately 10 kilometers. Yeah. I said they could, uh, they have a focus capability mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. seven miles. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, the first is the complete of one to four miles, and it's an overlap. Then there's a seven. Mm, that's seven. 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 Several. Okay. So several. Okay. Several. Okay. Several. Several. Okay. Several. Okay. Several. several miles. Yes. Uh -huh. Several miles span, yeah. and that several mile is not precise enough. Okay. It could be two million. But <laughs> what we are asking here is that if the frequency is much within a pipeline, it will create suspicion. We are working, we all can tell you much about the reaction of uh, people living within the neighborhood of the pipeline. Some are more inquisitive than others. Some are probing. Some are excited with any new thing. Some have really uh, or put into their storage the facility all the colors of the leaves, plants along the pipeline. So if there's any new installation, They'll be able to make up such installation that this thing is very fresh. Now, what do you do to the security? What do you say to the security of such a revelation? Okay. Right now, you don't remember. These are terrestrial radios of bandwidth. Um, mentioned earlier about the centers and if they are only at the control centers that is at the monitor yeah, the stations no. then it means that it needs to be transmitted and for it to also capture transmissions from another region each let's say, let's go to this lower steps so I'm each camera transmits information transmits there so there's a radio attached to this camera. That yes. can be received by the radio. Yes, that can be received. And there's a point to... Oh, uh, let's, let's go. Uh, that's the band that we start by. The radio. Custom selection of point to multi point arrangements. This, this is, uh, I think, this probably goes to your question also. The pipeline system is divided into geographical sectors. Um, for, because your requirements in the delta uh, is good. In a heavily forested area is going to be different from your requirement in southern area. So you divide it up into geographical sectors. First, for, for, for several reasons. Um, 
One is risk profile assessment, that in network design, then you go about and decide how many cameras do I have to go into each sub, uh, sub network, and so on. And from each, from each local access node. Local access node to regional, uh, regional hub. And then this is sent down the big pipeline to, to your operation center. Like I think that answers the question. Yes, what is the frequency uh, range? For the radio? Yeah. Uh, it's either be custom configured, but the one I'm driving, I'm describing here is 5.8 gigahertz. 5.8 yes. gigahertz. And the microwave has a limitation of 60 kilometers. 60 kilometers, yes. 60 kilometers range. That's line of sight. How? 50, 60 kilometers. That's me, two microwave radios. Okay. Barring all, all uh, obstruction and yeah, yields and whatever. So, what, how is an antenna system? Is it going to be VHF, I'm sorry, microwave antenna, or, you know, like this is a GSM thing, you understand? The antenna is so infinitesimal, we've got the range of frequency that it is handling, but the distance becomes very short. So, okay. how does that In our list of um, radios, that this, uh, that slider has any number of radios going up to various capacities. Okay. The different um, like sub frequencies, but different capabilities, different bandwidth, and so on. Yeah, and, yes. and different uh, propagation. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why um, in the heavily forested area, for instance, you, might, you don't have that much free and balanced size capabilities. capabilities. No. So, we've, we've uh, engineered something called uh, there's a near line of sight capability. Okay, which is a duality, where microwave is propagated. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, we didn't make too much technical details. This is yeah, yeah. technical area. Okay. And it's also, in uh, one of our tests, it was possible to receive information with no line of sight at all. It was by diffraction propagation. Okay. So we can go into the technical details. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, to a large extent, I think we've covered this, but this is, let me discuss a little bit about the slave sensors, because you're not going to find it in the market. Uh, and also familiar with the uh, boundary layer situations. Mm -hmm. okay. The velocity at, uh, at the wall is zero, where the liquid mass contact with the height is zero. Okay. We've taken advantage of that to, to generate new kind of sensors. That is, everything is running fine, you don't have to worry about it. But when there is no flow, or when there's a large flow, there's a puddle. So you know that um, at this part, something has happened yeah. at this location. Uh, at this time. Exactly. Uh, okay. Um, yes. Problem issues. This is what we just discussed. Okay. Camera protection. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Training and maintenance. This is uh, getting to the last. What's the maintenance uh, system you have for your, just for the pipe. I know you don't have any surveillance. Okay. How often is the pipe maintained? Professor. Yeah. Oh, sorry, could you please come in? Oh, my attention was on this. Sorry, I was here, but I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor
So my quarterly. Um, what do you know? Yes. Do you what, what we normally first we normally look for uh, first um, where the pipeline CP system has activated as far as the current or the voltage is consigned. Hmm? Yes. We are talking of the subsoil, subsoil pipeline. We look for that. We may not have free access to the main pipeline. I say look at the pipeline, you see it there. But with our installed equipment or uh, proofs, we can really have a feel qualitatively or quantitatively of how our pipeline is behaving as far as the protection, corrosion wise, is concerned. But if there is also something like perforation going on, if not visibly flowing out, occasionally, but that one is a lengthy way, it could be diagonally, eh? we can go for corrosion technique monitoring. I mean, the pipe coating monitoring or integrity surveillance. Uh, I, I answer the question because there's um, a lot of the pipeline operators can at any time pull up not just the history of the maintenance history of the pipe, but the condition of, of every segment of the pipe. Um, at this location, what's the thickness of the wall, things like that. And what is the risk? And all these things. This, again, is, uh, is established existing technology and they monitor this very frequently because they don't want any surprises. Um, when we on the surveillance system, you know asking that that on the surveillance system we will have first of all there'll be trend. Uh, I know we are always get trend. But this one I mean we have trend in the US and here. That's going to be a new system. Yeah. There's, there'll be certification of the engineers involved in the operations. Every engineer that has access to the system will be certified. Okay. Uh, and on all basis, probably. If necessary. Okay. We have rigorous routine maintenance. So one of the added benefits of this system is that um, for systems that, for capabilities that don't exist now, then we easily piggyback on this system um, that we just talked about. And that will help you in your you know, preventive maintenance and predictions, failure predictions and so on. And I mentioned earlier that at the very beginning of this project, we will map the pipeline. That is, on your computer screen you can pull up and see the full map of the pipeline where it is. That will be done. I mean, the, the infrastructure for that already exists since you have so many satellite stations. That's the thing that you do with satellite. Yeah, I'm going Okay. And um, okay, okay. another thing is uh, parts. There will be no shortage of parts. Yeah. And upgrades and frequent product review. I know sometimes foreigners come and sell things and they take off and then don't have a work. Then something gets obsolete and you're not uh, want or updated. We have websites that tell you about our products, upgrades, what is replacing what you need to, and things to improve and the system you need to. But all this available freely on the website. So there will be no uncertainty about what's going on in the system. Um, let me discuss this because this is coming next month. To, to, to cap what we've done, uh, we don't we look at the primary system. Of course, no, we're now familiar with IP cameras. Right? So you can have one camera here and monitor from anywhere. You can have a camera on a on a well. Single well, I'm going to let you have the radio to contact with that. But in the hammer time period, whatever period, heavy thunderstorms and so on, you can still make cell phone calls. You can still make uh, mobile phone calls. And that's the redundancy system. In a system, there is no single point of failure. At all times, 
you will always be able to detect, to monitor the system, to survey the system. Because one system fails, it's back up on the radio, the radio fails for if there's a thick dust on the cellular based system. Always, always, PPMC will be able to, to monitor, be it, to video monitor the pipelines and the vibrations of the pipelines. Um, that part concludes our <coughs> The IP cameras. Yes. I, IP is connected to the network. Yes. Does this system, that's the network, okay. have any integration with maybe uh, an internet uh, ISP? Oh, yes. Remember? Do you need an ISP? Ah, yes, you need internet access. But the good thing about all this is, so this is to be set up. There's subscription. No, 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 don't think about subscribing to anything. If uh, think of yourself, okay. the thing is that when the system is installed, yeah. it comes with cash. Uh, it can handle 6,000 subscriber units. Subscriber units is, you have a base unit, let's say here in the towers. And uh, and you want to um, you want people to get access. You want to monitor various areas, various floors, building areas, and so on, and adjoining buildings and so on. Each base unit can handle six thousand subscriber units. Well, for a situation in which you have access and you only need let's say one well that you want to monitor, because the well is too far away from another location, you have to go. Point to point. Okay. You have this much space, this much excess capacity. What do you do with them? They're still there and you pay for them. Uh -huh. If this thing is doing by the by the village, you say, well, I'm gonna give access, internet access and points to the villages. I'm not talking about the technical people here, because you already have access to you have your computers and so on. But I'm gonna give internet access and voice to the villages. So you have phones in the villages. What do you think that does to the attitude as a pipeline going through the neighborhood? Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. It's ownership. Anyway, that comes with the system. That's how a flexible and robust system is. Okay. So this system you are talking about now, subscribers, yeah. is that uh, the the that is the capability, that is the amount of those that can enter your system to get information. At each hop, yes. At each hop, okay. Yes, that can um, send information to it or access okay. from each hop. Yes. So as you mean you have just 1,000 yes. subscribers. Yes. You mean yes. it's just 1,000 subscribers. I don't have money from it. An internet company. Oh, right? oh. <laughs> so if you have to can look additional money from that. <laughs> if you want to commercial, I go commercial too, <laughs> in that line. Telecoms could be your second. <laughs> okay. Um, it is still from this uh, association. Uh, equipment or deployments from members. We are extremely that we won't be able to. Okay. We saw this. This was a video. This is the video we started with. Uh, California Department of Transportation. This page, just one. Companies in the constitution. But you see, these are very established names. Uh, company profile, local contents, and uh, let me see this. Thank you, Java. You my member. This system could be of use to PPMs in the current atmosphere of the families that exist in the country. Yes. No? Yes, that is.
Do you have, um, do you have any questions about the deployments as to what, what is it that's going to get to influence the decision to deploy? Not the financial aspect, just the ability to use it. Any, any, any questions or doubts about it? Yes, please. No, but since you've given us the green light to possibilities of the installations and, uh, of course, keeping them off the recognition of passers-by, yes. but then, when the actual work comes up, most of us, we brainstorm and we may configure certain things that can be elusive to exactly. so their site. It's the custom factory that will play the patch. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, any other? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, Electro and the internship, car, or whatever means, has yeah. the same access to the same information immediately. And so, so it's a very good thing. That, uh, I mean, uh, the police and uh, the military are even very happy when they saw this. And <laughs> I tell you, yeah. they even go in the extra mile, they even, even talk about it, the war front and things like that. Uh, let them forget about war front. Let them protect No, we're saying, no, in case of trouble like this, I'm not sure. Let them protect our governors and. Uh, no,